spaceship towards uh, towards the black hole, and uh, we'll throw this Rubik's cube in, and something will happen with some machinery back on Earth, and uh, you'll hit the singularity and uh, cause the black hole to be teleported into some other universe that isn't ours. So we'll be fine. Well, all we've had to keep us company is the Rubik's Cube, the boombox which plays music and communicates with uh, people back on Earth, and uh, this iceberg sheet. And uh, in the past six months, I haven't spared a single thought about, uh, about the iceberg sheet. Do you want to, you want to read through that? Yeah, uh, uh, let's do that until we get to a black hole. Victoria, a super cool laser lab. We can, uh, we can discover this female scientist, one of the few female scientists in the game. Here, I think her name is because of the iceberg and I'm pretty sure one of them mentions it. See? Denied for featured. So one time I loaded into this Act 2 when I was working on it at the time, and there was a, uh, it's like a white cube here. It looked like this, and uh, it was it was like a sign on it that just said like it was like um this has been denied for featured. Thank you for your application. And I, I, I said, I said, uh, I said, who placed on it? And, uh, it said, Solby, Amorous, Solby, whatever the name is, the admin, one of the admins of Block 8. And I was thinking, okay, denied for featured, huh. I didn't, I don't remember applying for featured. I never applied for featured for my, uh, for my Block 8 game. So I guess someone applied for me and the admin decided to go in and just let me know that, uh, yeah. Not feature worthy, which is fine, because I don't want featured, but, uh, pretty much, I was just wondering, okay, well, if someone didn't submit this, then I guess they must have just, yeah, one of the admins must have just, I guess, remembered that my game exists and decided to join and crush our dreams of some sort, or what, you know, we, I don't, I don't know. And uh, I, I deleted the sign. And I uh, probably forgot about it, but I always remember it as a, just, just a thing that happened one day. Yeah, just, just one, of the, one of the moments of history of my game. Black Mesa University. Okay, we can see in Gordon Freeman's apartment with lots of lore about him. The uh, one of the main things in this room is uh, his. Uh, I'll read it. Black Mesa. Black Mesa University. This is to award it that Gordon Freeman, having demonstrated knowledge and eagerness to learn Black Mesa technologies and methods, specific to the anomalous materials test lab department. Gordon Freeman has passed a five-month-long hiring course at Black Mesa University. Date issued, May 15th, 2000. By Dr. Kleiner. Or Dr. Isaac Kleiner. His mentor. As you can see here in the background, there is a Black Mesa University thing on the wall. Meaning, and you can tell by that light, that's a Black Mesa light. So, I don't think you'll ever see it in in the games, except maybe in Blue Shift and Opposing Force, which haven't been made yet. I don't know, but Black Mesa has a university on their on their grounds. Their 
research facility has a university within it somewhere. Where? We, we, we don't know yet. But it's just out there. And yeah, you need to go to Black Mesa's university to even work there. Pretty cool. You know, that student loan debt, you just pay it off by uh, working for five years to earn the money back to pay it. Romlin Electric. Okay, so Romlin Electric is a electrical company that I doubt Black Mesa own, but may have contracted to uh, build one of their power facilities on the surface to power the slide and these lights and probably the doors of this area. God knows how many uh, Bromlin electrical uh, power boxes exist, but we know that they do create or have created power boxes that look like this with this decal. So if you find any power boxes that look like this, they were probably made by these guys. Probably just uh, electrical maintenance or you know electrical installation company in the Hopkins uh, universe. This guy, I, I think he was a builder on Act 1, but obviously he stopped fucking joining and I'm pretty sure I unfriended him and he lost his perm, so just some builder guy into a mega fight. He's still in the group I think. Wah, wah, wah. Same with this guy, Apathetic Anson. Um, he wasn't a builder though, I think he was just a player who really liked the game and joined it all the time and then he just went offline for a really long time, but he's my friend on Steam and Roblox still. Okay, so, for the soundboard, in, um, in Act 1, Act 1, uh, Robot Fiend 12, also known as The Skibbity, made a soundboard that would play a sound block trigger that was have infinite radius over the entire world and you'd hear like random SCP funny noises right but eventually I got so annoyed that I removed it. Igorka1920 Bruh I am recording what do you want to be said on to I didn't know. Too late. No, don't say something funny. I'm gonna force this guy to start thinking. You can't just say something funny from the top of so you have to start thinking about it. You have to think for like a minute straight to just plant something funny in the sort of brain. Speak English. I don't, I don't talk European or Hungary, German, Austrian or Westphalian or whatever y'all are. Guts and black powder, uh, Euro trash. So, anomalous materials slash unforeseen consequences layout shift theory. Okay. So, the layout shift theory goes like this. After the anti-mass spectrometer goes boom boom, uh, there's a theory, which is pretty much canon since I've said that that's probably what happened, or definitely what happened multiple times. It's the idea that the actual layout of just the anomalous materials lab shifts in ways. Because when we built the anomalous materials lab before the disaster, as you can see, over here, uh, the layout, it looks a little bit different to how we built it here. You know, a couple of blocks are off, you know. 
it's pretty hard to recreate all of that exactly without a single block off for you know a little bit little bit of stuff missing. So we thought um what if instead to cover up our laziness, I mean uh, imperfection, we uh we actually needed um there was, a, there was actually a uh, layout shift during the uh, explosion, which changed the slight size of everything in the Ormus Materials Lab. And like, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool, right? So yeah, that's Canon. Uh, that's why the layout is different. It's because the, the resonance cascade just shifted the actual department underground area. Shifted a bunch of what the fuck? Help! Help me! Dr. Breen again? I thought I saw the last of him in City 13. Dr. Wallace Breen, future administrator of Earth and former, and at the time in the game, current administrator of Black Mesa, can be seen on a photo in the fridge where Gordon, Kleiner, every enormous materials team member lived in the same Area 9 dormitory's apartment and used the same kitchen. Catch me later, I'll buy you beer. Alright, we can see our buddy Barney Calhoun is right here. He will eventually get his own game and uh, and stuff. And like, this is the only time he'll see Gordon and the only time Gordon sees him. So, as for now, in Half a Cave War, he's just a just in that little, 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 little hole there, you can see him. Just chilling in this area where they, got, where they get apprehended by the agency. Hey, stop reading the iceberg chart. We have to fill in the Rubik's Cube right now before the black hole sucked up. Though. We have to throw it in so it can start to save the universe and the world. Just do it. I'll do it. Here we go. Alright, it's doing it! We're getting sucked in! Ah!